aortic stenosis. As we already discussed in aortic regurgitation, which is a closing problem, so aortic stenosis is nothing but opening problem. So the aortic stenosis is the opening problem. Nothing but opening problem of the aortic valve. And it is often caused by degenerative calcific changes in the valve leaflets. So what is the cause? Degenerative calcific changes in the aortic valve. And this degenerative calcific changes in the aortic valve is more commonly seen in elderly approximately 70 years of age. So the calcification of the aortic valve that is degenerative calcific changes in the aortic valve is the most common cause of aortic stenosis. So what exactly happens in the aortic stenosis? Especially the valve area is reduced. As you can see in this picture, the above one is the normal aortic valve and the below one is the calcified aortic valve. So in the below image, what you can see over here is the valve area is reduced and acts as a major resistant point. So from the narrowed aortic valve, the blood is not ejected into the aorta, especially from the left ventricle. There's a reason what happens is the pressure decreases in the aorta as the blood is ejected into the aorta. If maximum amount of the blood is ejected into the aorta, aortic pressure increases. If the stroke volume is decreased, if enough amount of the blood is not ejected from the left ventricle into the aorta, what happens is the aortic pressure decreases. That is systolic pressure of the aorta decreases. That is what is very important point you need to remember about aortic stenosis. But in advanced state, there will be greater than 100 millimeters of pressure gradient across the valve during ejection is the most common point what you need to remember. Now, what is the left ventricular systolic pressure? Because the blood is not ejected enough into the aorta, the blood is accumulated in the left ventricle itself because of the stenotic aortic valve. So, in the left ventricle, the pressure is increased. So, left ventricular, left ventricular systolic pressure is increased. Remember this point, left ventricular systolic pressure is greatly increased in the aortic stenosis and mainly it is increased to overcome the resistant to flow that is increased in the afterload. So, left ventricular systolic pressure increases, that is it's mainly happening because the left ventricular pressure increases to overcome resistance to flow that is increased in the afterload what we will see in the aortic stenosis. Now what is the pathophysiology in this? There will be a pressure overload because it, there is no increase in the volume. There is too much pressure is created in the left ventricle without change in the volume, right? That is the reason pressure overload in the left ventricle leads to concentric ventricular hypertrophy. So here there will be concentric, concentric ventricular hypertrophy. Very important point, concentric ventricular hypertrophy, what we will see over here, because of the concentric ventricular hypertrophy, there will be a reduction in the chamber size of the left ventricle. So whenever there is a reduction in the chamber size of the left ventricle, left ventricular filling also will become defective. So there will be a diastolic dysfunction, especially in the aortic stenosis. So what happens over here? Concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. Because of this concentric left ventricular hypertrophy, there will be a decrease in the left ventricular chamber size. 
decrease in the left ventricular chamber size and there will be diastolic diastolic dysfunction important mcq points decrease in the left ventricular chamber size as well as diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle what we will see in the aortic stenosis now because of the left ventricular pressure is increased too much increase in the left ventricular systolic pressure the backward pressure also increases that is left atrial pressure increases and because of the diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle whatever may be the blood which is present in the left atrium cannot enter into the left ventricle the left atrial volume increases the left atrial pressure increases there is a reason in aortic stenosis because of the diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle next important point is left atrium enlarges left atrium enlarges and not only the left atrium enlargement leads to left atrial hypertrophy left atrial enlargement leads to left atrial hypertrophy and atrial contraction a more important role in the ventricular filling due to diastolic dysfunction and it leads to a prominent a wave what we will see in the aortic stenosis right so you will see prominent a wave very important mcq point prominent a wave what you will see in the aortic stenosis especially due to diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle the atrial systole becomes extremely important for filling of the ventricles right that's the reason there will be a prominent a wave what you will see in the graph now what happens because of the too much enlargement of the left atrium because of the left atrial hypertrophy there will be an atrial fibrillation right so because of the consequence of left atrial enlargement and left atrial hypertrophy what happens is there will be atrial fibrillation and this atrial fibrillation is a complication of left atrial enlargement as well as left atrial hypertrophy creates a problem with the ventricular filling so what is the meaning of atrial fibrillation atria is not contracting if atria is not contracting the blood is not entering into the left ventricle so the diastolic problem becomes more severe there's a reason because of the complication of left atrial enlargement and left atrial hypertrophy atrial fibrillation develops in long standing cases that creates more problem with ventricular filling what we will see in the aortic stenosis so initially during the initial stages of uh, this aortic stenosis ventricular hypertrophy assists ejection but eventually leads to systolic dysfunction of the left ventricle so in long standing cases what you need to remember about aortic stenosis is left ventricular systolic ejection problem in long standing cases left ventricular systolic ejection problem leads to systolic dysfunction of the left ventricle what we will see in the aortic stenosis now what about the aortic pressure in the early stages because of the enlarged or hypertrophied left ventricle is assisting the ejection in the initial stages of the aortic stenosis aortic pressure is normal in the early stages but whenever the systolic dysfunction develops especially of the left ventricle then aortic pressure is normal in the early stages but in later stages whenever the systolic dysfunction develops there will be decrease in the aortic pressure in the later stages of the aortic stenosis what you need to remember and in advanced stages there will be too much hypertrophy of the left ventricle because of the too much hypertrophy of the left ventricle the oxygen demand as well as the vascular demand of the left ventricle increases whenever there is a problem with the demand as well as supply patient develops angina exertional syncope and congestive heart failure so in this table you can see that 
these three are the complications of uh, advanced stage of aortic stenosis. Now let us talk about what type of murmur you can hear in aortic stenosis. Because the murmur is especially seen in the systolic period of the left ventricle, especially during the ejection period, we know that in the cardiac cycle, the systole has been divided into three phases, isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection, as well as reduced ejection, right? Out of all these three, especially in the rapid ejection phase of the cardiac cycle, the intensity as well as the severity of the murmur will be more. So, it is a systolic murmur and it is an ejection murmur. There is a reason we will say that systolic ejection murmur begins after S1. Why we are calling after S1? Because S1 is heard during isovolumetric contraction period of the cardiac cycle. We know that S1 which is nothing but called as first heart sound which can be heard during isometric or isovolumetric contraction of the cardiac cycle. At the isovolumetric contraction, the atrioventricular valve closes. After that, the ejection period starts. In that, again we have rapid ejection as well as reduced ejection. The intensity of the murmur is more severe when too much amount of the blood wants to leave the ventricle and it passes through the stenotic aortic valve. There is a reason it is a systolic murmur, ejection murmur, intensity is more severe in the rapid ejection phase of the cardiac cycle and begins after S1, right? Begins after S1 is nothing but after isovolumetric contraction period of the cardiac cycle and it is a crescendo decrescendo murmur. Why we are calling it as a crescendo decrescendo intensity? Because the intensity of the murmur is too much in the rapid ejection phase and the intensity of the murmur is decreased in the reduced ejection phase because the flow as well as velocity of the blood which is ejecting through the stenotic aortic valve decreases in the reduced ejection phase. There is a reason in the rapid ejection phase it is crescendo in nature and in reduced ejection phase it is decrescendo in nature. There is a reason it is called as crescendo decrescendo murmur or we can say crescendo decrescendo in intensity. So, this is the type of murmur what you will see in the aortic stenosis. So, generally a pressure overload of the left ventricle that can be seen in the condition like aortic stenosis as well as hypertension is well tolerated short term but it is poorly tolerated long term. So, generally this left ventricular chamber, this is the left ventricular chamber and this is the iota and whenever there is a aortic stenosis, whatever and this is the mitral valve, whenever there is a aortic stenosis, the blood is ejected into the iota through the narrow chamber. So, because of this initially there will be a pressure overload of the left ventricle. So, this pressure overload of the left ventricle because of the aortic stenosis or maybe because of the hypertension is well tolerated short term, but remember it is poorly tolerated long term. Initially, there is no increase in the preload. With the increased performance, the result of an increased contractility. So, the compensatory concentric hypertrophy actually develops because whenever the too much pressure is increased in the left ventricle, the left ventricular muscle thickness is greatly increased like this. So, it keep on increasing as the pressure in the left ventricle increases. So, this left ventricular muscle thickness is increased. It is called as concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle. So, here what happens generally because of the concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricle, the left ventricular volume is greatly decreased. So, compensatory concentric hypertrophy develops with a greatly thickened ventricular wall and reduction in the chamber size and associated diastolic dysfunction can be seen because this is the valve and the blood cannot enter into the left ventricle from the left atria. There is a reason there is a diastolic dysfunction. So, remember few important points about the aortic stenosis that there is a concentric hypertrophy of the left ventricular wall there will be a diastolic dysfunction 
initially there is no systolic dysfunction but eventually because of too much increase in the thickness of the ventricular myocardium especially of the left ventricle there will be increased demand of the oxygen as well as nutrients and there will be decreased supply by the coronary arteries patient develops angina type of symptoms and there will be eventually a systolic dysfunction develops with a left ventricular failure so in the long standing cases the death occurs especially in the aortic stenosis is because of left ventricular failure the most defining characteristic in the aortic stenosis is that the left ventricular systolic pressure is significantly higher than the aortic systolic pressure in normal conditions the left ventricular systolic pressure is approximately 120 mm of mercury in the same way the aortic is also same 120 mm of mercury but because of the stenotic aortic valve enough amount of the blood is not ejected from the left ventricle into the aorta there's a reason aortic pressure may be up to 90 to 100 mm of mercury right so there will be a decrease in the systolic pressure of the aorta and because of the too much pressure has been created inside the left ventricle and there will be significant increase in the systolic left ventricular pressure approximately it is greater than 140 mm of mercury okay so the difference between the systolic pressure of the aorta and systolic pressure of the left ventricle is the most defining characteristic feature of the aortic stenosis right and this is what you need to know about aortic stenosis